If you're clicking on this video, you might have seen my necromancer guide that I posted the other day, which did really, really well. So thank you for that and thank you for watching it. I had a lot of feedback and I took that feedback that I received from that video and I wanted to do a step-by-step -step point allocation to show you how to assemble this build from point one through point 50. Now keep in mind that you may stumble into areas that give you a skill point, so these are not necessarily tied to just leveling up. I base my builds on mathematics, however there are different iterations that are close to this, but I believe from my testing and playing around with it that the Shadow Darkness Summoner Necro is the strongest at this time for level 1 to 50. Now, this guide is going to show you the abilities to select within Basic, Core, Corpse, Curse, Ultimate, Key Passives, and then I will show you the Book of the Dead. I hope that you find this guide helpful for your Necromancer playthrough experience. If you enjoy this video, smash the like button. If you don't, hit the dislike. It does help others to see it. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the video. And lastly, hit subscribe and the bell button as I earn your trust through video game reviews, previews, and gaming guides that I bring to you. All right, so let's start off with zero points so you can see how I allocate them when acquiring. If you want the full breakdown and analysis of why I'm choosing each skill, I will have the other breakdown video in the description and at the end of this video. Okay, first point is going to decompose, and the second point is going to enhance decompose, which will now open up my ability for a core selection. The third point is going to blight, and this will utilize essence. However, decompose actually gives us essence when we are attacking, so keep that in mind. Fourth point is going to enhance blight to really slow down the enemy movement when I hit them with that. My fifth point goes straight to supernatural blight to boost the damage within the blight core skill. Then my sixth point, I go right back up and hit decompose again. All right, now I've unlocked corpse explosion, which is where things get really fun. My seventh point is going to corpse explosion, which is a very devastating attack. My eighth point is going to go to Enhance Corpse Explosion to again increase that radius of damage. And then my ninth point goes to Blighted Corpse Explosion to make this perk now into a Darkness skill to integrate well within my build. My tenth point, I go right back up and I hit Decompose. And then my eleventh point, I go right back over and I level up Blight. So now I've unlocked my Curse skills, but if you watch my other video, I don't use any of these core skills. I just want the passives, but my 12th point is going to go to Skeletal Warrior Mastery to start really increasing my army's life and their damage. Then I'm going back over here and I want the passives. So my 13th point goes to Death's Embrace and 14th point goes to Death's Reach. So I really start to cover the damage modifiers both close and far away from the enemy. All right, point 15, I'm going to go to Skeletal Warrior Mastery. As a Necro, you're kind of commanding the battlefield and depending on others to fight for you, so keep that in mind that you got to keep them alive. So point 16, I'm going to Corpse Explosion, and then point 17, I hit Blight again. Now I've unlocked my next Corpse area, but I don't want to mess with that one quite yet. So point 18, I'm going with Skeletal Mage Mastery, as I want to start beefing them up since you unlock them at level 15, and you should have them by now. Point 18, I go to my Skeletal Warrior Mastery to max their health and life out for me so I can keep them alive on the battlefield. Point 20, I allocate back up to Decompose, and point 21 goes to Corpse Explosion. A point 22, I'm going over here to Death's Embrace, and then 23 goes to Death's Reach. And then now I'm starting to kind of max out my core skills, if you will. So point 24, I go up and I max out my decomposition. All right, so now we've unlocked our ultimate and we're getting pretty close to level 25 when we get our golems. So point 25 goes to Bone Storm. I want Bone Storm because it not only swirls around myself to do damage to the enemy, but it swirls around my golem as well once I get them. So I'm able to hit the enemy with double damage from being up close and away due to us both having that going around us. Point 26 goes to Prime Bone Storm, and then point 27, I go up and I hit Reaper's Pursuit. Now, Reaper's Pursuit, it's not really a great perk because it's just kind of your movement, but it unlocks good passives for this build, so it's basically a gatekeeper perk, if you will. So point 28, I go up and I hit Gloom, 
and point 29 I do Terror. Then to round off at point 30 I hit Supreme Bone Storm. Okay, by now you should have your Golem and we want to give him some life since the dude's an absolute tank. Point 30, I level up Golem Mastery. Then point 32, I go back up to the top and I slap Blight one more time. I realize I'm saying point a lot. I got, I got to work on this for the next video. But well, let's try this. Skill number 33 goes to Corpse Explosion. And this unlocks your key passives and since this is a darkness class, we want to spend point 34 on Shadow Blight. All right, we're almost there. We're over halfway there, so bear with me. But at this point, you can kind of feel free to spend around how you want. But if you want to follow mine, you will spend skill point 35 on Skeletal Mage Mastery, followed by point 36 on Golem Mastery, so they live long and prosper. Point 37, I'm maxing out my Blight. And then point 38, I'm maxing out my Corpse Explosion. From here out, it's really about maxing out my passives to increase and strengthen my army on the battlefield. So point 39, I max out my Death's Embrace. 40 goes to Death's Reach. And then 41 maxes out my Skeletal Mage Mastery so they too live long and prosper and die for me and work for me. All right, number 42, I go with Inspiring Leader. I spend point 43 on Death's Defense to really help my minions sustain multiple venues of damage attacks so they don't just die on the first one. They take a little bit more time to, uh, to kill. And I spend number 44 and 45 up here on Crippling Darkness to really start and get more stunning going on on the battlefield. Then number 46, I do Gloom, followed by point 47, I hit Gloom again. Point 48, I do max out my Golem. However, you can do it earlier if you want, but they are pretty strong, so I wanted to save it for a little bit and get some other things upgraded. Point 49, I hit Terror again. And then my 50th point that I spend on this build is on Death's Defense. Now, I want you to realize you're going to have some extra points here at the end to kind of fill out your build once you get to a certain point and you start the Paragon system. So, what I do with these four points is this. I max out my Terror first, followed by my Death's Defense, so it takes multiple big attacks from bosses, especially, to take out my minions. It gives me the ability to keep them alive so I can either blow them up, or I get more corpses. And that's kind of the goal here because they're tearing the flesh and things off of the enemy to generate more corpse. So I want to keep them alive and keep them fighting for me. Then I max out my crippling darkness and the other point I spend on inspiring leader. Now you probably see that I have a few points allocated to them that I did not do before. That's because I'm starting to get into the end game where item contribution aids to this by things I have equipped. I'm not quite ready to do an end game guide as I have quite a bit of work to do to basically do a good job and give a build that I think is going to be substantive for you. So that will come in the future. But lastly, I'm going to show you my book of the dead so you kind of know what I'm running. I go skeletal reapers on here and because I'm dependent upon corpses to explode them or bring to life and fight for me, I choose the middle one that provides a 15% chance to carve flesh. This is big when fighting bosses who do not generate ads for you to take out. Your reapers will farm them out for you every time that they attack. You have that 15% chance to carve flesh and generate a corpse. I choose Skeletal Mages for the next one with an emphasis on the shadow, and I do like the additional shadow bolt that they fire every fifth attack sequence. Then for my big boy, I do Bone Golem with the first selection. Again, this golem sheds corpses, so I get to blow them up or bring them to life every time 20% of his health gets shredded. So I have multiple avenues to generate new corpses to explode them or bring them to life, which is the goal in this summoning build. Now the goal here, like I said, it's not to have your Necro doing all the damage as it's much different than the other classes. The goal is to command the battlefield and keep your army alive and fighting for you while you issue damage from a distance and explode corpses. You're constantly monitoring when to raise a corpse or blow one up depending on your health of your army currently fighting for you. At the end of the day, there's several variations of builds that you can do for blood and bone, which are also pretty strong. However, when I utilize all the other combinations, I did not notice the absolute punishing and melting damage I was able to do in comparison to this Shadow Summoning build. I hope that you guys enjoy this Diablo 4 Necro build guide broken down into step-by-step, step, and then it helps you in getting started and leveling up. 
I will do another one later for in-game that looks at the gear and skills and combination to go for. Um, and I'm also working on a sorcerer guide just like this one. So if you plan to start a sorcerer, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with the bell button hit. So you catch all my reviews, previews, and gaming guides. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and be cool to people.